When I play out, I play guitar and keyboard. And when I play the keyboard, I need a volume pedal because I'm using both hands to play. So I went and looked for Yamaha's FC7 volume pedal. It's great, but it's 50 bucks. I knew I could do better than that. So I came up with this FC7 clone. It's based on previous designs of stereo volume pedals that I've made videos of. And like in those designs, it uses a single linear 100K audio taper pot. And the only other electrical part you need is a stereo phono cable. So let's get started by making the case. Now here's the material you need. It's all MDF, half inch, quarter inch, and one eighth inch. We're going to cut these pieces to these sizes, and as we go through the build, I'll show you how to machine the individual pieces. So here's the two sides, and they're mirror images of each other. In fact, when I drilled the hole, I hold the two together, drilled through both, so that the hole is in the exact same place on both. Notice I drilled a small pilot hole first, and then I'm going to expand it to a quarter of an inch. Here's the dimensions for the pot holder. You notice there's four holes, and the inside two holes I'm going to cut out using a utility knife and a straight edge. So get a utility knife with a nice new sharp blade and cut on both sides of the hole. Be careful now because if you slip you could hurt yourself. So just take your time. After cutting on one side, I continue to cut on the other side. After the utility knife makes that groove, I really don't need the straight edge anymore. So I'm going to now go through and continue cutting into that groove and wear down. You see, after cutting for a while, now I can take out some of that material. And then I can keep on cutting. And as I continue cutting nice and slow, you notice I've gone through where I started the cut. So I'll turn the pot holder around and continue cutting until that whole area is free. And I can push that out. And once I've pushed it out, I can clean it up with a little sandpaper. And the pot holder is ready to go. So with that done, you can move on to the glue up. First, I've glued the bottom to the sides. And you noticed I've used some spare four inch wide pieces to keep the sides parallel because when you clamp, the sides want to go in. So putting those pieces there keeps them parallel. Then I've taken the two studs and clamped those flush to the bottom and to the back. And then I've put the top on flush to the studs. And now I've glued on the pot holder. And notice I've, I've installed the pot so that I can make sure everything fits properly. And now we can work on the pedal. Here's the pedal. And you notice I've drilled a 7 32nd inch hole on one side. And I've drilled a quarter inch hole in the front centered on the width and the thickness of the pedal. And I've also drilled a mirror image 732nd inch hole on the other side. And when I positioned it, I made sure it was the same distance from the front as the hole on the other side. The next thing to do is to thread in a 1 quarter 20 by 1 inch long crown bolt that I bought at Home Depot into the 732nd inch holes. And you notice I have a clamp on there. I'm pre-threading it because if I don't do that on MDF, it will tend to spread and I don't want to do that. I've countersunk the holes on both sides and now I can pass the bolts through those countersunk holes and screw them into the pedal. Now I'm moving the pedal to make sure it works, but notice one thing. The linear pot isn't going all the way up and that's because the square back of the pedal isn't allowing it to. So the answer is to taper the back of the pedal down about one and a half inches from the end. By doing that, it allows the linear pot to go all the way up. I've pre-drilled four clearance holes in the back and then pre-drilled four holes for the screws. 
and those pre-drill holes are just large enough to accept the screws that I'm going to use. Again, because this is MDF, I have to clamp and pre-screw the holes so that the MDF doesn't spread. And then I can screw those screws in without any problem. But you notice that things are a little rough here. Everything doesn't exactly line up. So I'm going to take care of that with my sander. You can use a file or sandpaper, or if you have a sander, that's great. And when you're done, this is what it should look like. So we have the pedal that moves up and down, and we have that taper that's one and a half inches long on the back. And we have that taper so that the pedal can go all the way down and the pot can go all the way up. And the pedal can go even further, and that gives you a little volume boost if you need it. Of course, we have the back on with the four screws. Here we show the back of the linear pot, the connector end of the cable, and the connections between them. And that's the cable I bought. I'm going to cut five feet off it and use it to connect to the linear pot. The other side, I'll just put a connector on and use it as a regular cable. And now I'm going to remove the insulation, and it shows a bare wire and then a red and white wire. All I have to do now is figure out which wire goes to which. So I'll check between the sleeve and the bare wire, and I find I've got continuity. So let me mark that down. The sleeve is connected to the bare wire. Next I'll try the ring and I notice that's connected to the white and the tip is connected to the red. So now I've painted everything up, finished it all up, and I'm going to drill a hole so that I can put the wire through and make sure that the hole doesn't interfere with the linear pot. Now I can expand that pilot hole so that it, the, uh, the audio cable fits right through. And in this case I've used a quarter inch drill bit because that matches the diameter of the audio cable. I'm just going to put those, all those wires together so they, I can get them through the hole and then push the cable down far enough so that I can do the wiring easily. I'll put the linear pot back in and you, you notice I've connected the bare wire and the red wire. I have to complete just by connecting that white wire. And that's it. That's all the electrical connection. To make sure that wire doesn't move, I'm using a hot glue gun on both the inside and the outside, and that'll prevent the wire from moving in or out. Now we put the pedal back on, slide it onto the linear pot, put the crown bolts back in, and that just about does it. If you'd like to have a non-skid surface, you can stop at Walmart and pick up one of those stair tread appliques and put it on, or you can even cut down a uh, roof shingle and glue that on, and that makes a great non-skid surface. So we'll finish putting the crown bolts in, make sure everything works smoothly, and all we have left to do is put the back on, and everything is ready to go. Looks good. And that completes this build. Hope you can use this FC7 clone on your Yamaha or other keyboard. Email me with any comments or questions and I'll be happy to reply. Until next time.